Welcome to our new video. Microsoft Edge has moved up the popular browser stable. When it comes to the desktop browser market share, Edge is in third place as of the time of recording this video, and with 9.6% of the market share, it has already surpassed the likes of Opera and Firefox. For people who want to switch to a Linux-based operating system but are still tied to Microsoft's ecosystem and they want or need to use Microsoft's online apps, for instance, Edge might be a viable option. In this video, we will show you how to install Microsoft Edge in Linux and how to do it properly. Besides, we will also suggest a native Linux alternative. Stay tuned! First, we will follow a tip given online, according to which users only need to download the browser from its official website. The site automatically recognizes the visiting operating system and offers the download option. Since we are on a Ubuntu-based operating system for the video, we will download the browser in the .deb format. Once the installation file is downloaded, in our case we just need to double-click it, and the system offers the file to be installed via the official software store. The browser was quickly installed and it was time to set it up. A welcome tour is a part of the process and users can learn some of the Edge's features. One of them is that you can use Microsoft 365 apps for free on Microsoft Edge. The setup is finished and everything seems to be alright. But we decided to restart the system, just in case. And now, here's the problem. If you install Edge the way we just did, your system updates will have issues. What happens is that when you start Software Updater, the app will report that it failed to download repository information. If you happen to be a newcomer to Linux, it's easy to figure out what's going on. Just start the terminal application and type in the command sudo apt update, which refreshes the list of available updates. You will see that there is an error. The problem is with the Microsoft Edge repository. Basically, and to put it in plain English as much as it's possible, this is actually a warning against potential package installation from unknown sources. The error message prompts the user to verify and manually import the third-party signature belonging to the relevant package developer. So, we will start all over again and from scratch. But first, we need to uninstall Edge and everything that it usually leaves behind, even in a Linux-based system. Our first stop is our favorite system application in Debian-based systems, and that is Synaptic Package Manager, which is a classic graphical app for installing and uninstalling programs. There, we search for Microsoft Edge and then instruct the system app to remove Edge completely. Now let's see what's left behind. We open the terminal app and update the updates list. There are no issues now and the system only offers certain libraries to be upgraded. The next thing is to clean the folder Edge usually leaves in the Home folder. 
To do this, you need to enable the option Show Hidden Files in the File Manager. Open the .config folder and then delete the Microsoft Edge folder. And finally, let's check the software sources for the system. Now we will start the Software and Updates app and there, under the Other Software tab, we will check if there are any Microsoft leftovers. There are no Microsoft repositories left, which means that there is no trace of Edge in the system. To install Edge and then not to have the update issues, we need to use the command line. The first thing is to refresh the updates list. According to tutorials that we found on the internet, what it takes now is to copy several lines of code into the terminal app. After updating all packages, the next thing is to add some generic dependencies to the system that may or may not be already installed. It will not harm the system anyway. The following command instructs the system to download the GPG key to verify the package's authenticity. Now we will import the Microsoft Edge repository. Refreshing the repository list is the next step. And after that, it's time to order the package manager to install the Microsoft Edge web browser. The browser is installed and we will restart the system once again. Updating the system via software updater works flawlessly this time around. So we will set up the browser one more time. However, checking the updates via terminal reports a warning which basically reads that Edge is configured multiple times in the software sources list. But never mind, there is a way to fix this via the graphical user interface. To check this out, we will open the Software and Updates app again and review the software sources. The same Microsoft repository seems to be added twice to the system. We will just remove one of those entries. Refreshing software cache goes with no issues, as does refreshing the updates list in the command line. One Microsoft Edge repository is there, so everything looks alright. And for those of you who have installed the Brave browser in Linux, this is nothing new. There's a similar procedure to install Brave in Linux too, which we've already explained in our video specifically dedicated to the Brave browser. Now, if you want to use some of the Microsoft Online apps via Edge, like Office Online or Outlook Email, there you go. Additionally, Edge offers many options in its settings section including privacy settings or customization. If you decide to remove Microsoft Edge from your system, you just need to copy three commands into the terminal app. The first one will uninstall Edge. The second one will remove the GPG key, while 
the third one will clear Microsoft from the sources list. Next, we open the Software and Updates app and delete the Microsoft Edge repository from the list. Now we repeat the process of deleting the Microsoft Edge folder in the Home folder. What's left to do is to check if updates now work correctly. Updating via software updater is OK, as is updating via the command line. Microsoft Edge is a Chromium-based web browser. And Chromium itself is an open source project, so if you really need a Chromium based browser, you can install one directly within your system. And that's the Chromium itself. So now let's open the software application and choose Chromium. In our particular case, with the Linux distribution we chose for the video, the Chromium browser can be installed from various sources Snap and Flatpak software platforms. We'll go with the Flatpak version, and it turns out it's the version of ungoogled Chromium. That is, Chromium, but without Google Web Services. Once the installation is done, the browser starts with no issues. It's like an empty board now, that you can write on anything you like, and customize it the way you like it. Of course, Microsoft's online services work regularly in Chromium, if you really need them. So, that's it for the video. We'd really hope you like it and find it useful. What do you think? Have we done everything correctly? Could we do something differently? Tell us all in the comment section down below. Please do not forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it already. Thank you for watching and see you next time.